Hi, and welcome back. I'm Sheldon McLeod. This is Thinking Out Loud, and this is presented to you here on the Saltwire Network. It's my space, my opportunity to build a community to talk about the issues that are important. I remember years ago when I uh, had an opportunity to start talking about things on a daily basis, and I started talking about food, and people were like, why? It's, well, because I eat almost every day, and so do most of the people I know. This is important and relevant. This is something that's been going on for a while. This conversation at Halifax Regional Municipality, I, be, I believe it was 2019, when the Just Food Action Plan was announced, uh, a long-range strategy, they described it, for building a healthy, just, and sustainable food system. And they say as the region's first food strategy, the Just Food Action Plan proposes measurable steps to support community food security and strengthen our food system. And this was uh, met with some applause. I will say that. I think that's a fair way to put it. Uh, the folks with the Ecology Action Center have been involved with this. In fact, uh, the EAC has co-chaired uh, part of this with the municipality. And as the mayor says, we need coordinated efforts to improve our food system and increase access to good food. Well, who could argue with that? So what does this all mean in real terms? As mentioned, the Ecology Action Center has been invested in this and more veil. Uh, they are the community food coordinator with the Ecology Action Center, and they're with me here in Halifax. So, uh, thank you very much for doing this, more. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Sheldon. It's really nice to be here. And uh, just looking briefly at your bio, uh, you have a bit of a background in farms or, or agriculture, do you? Yeah, I've um, been an urban farm coordinator in the past and have been sort of more directly involved in the production end of the food system. How do you describe this action plan for food part a what is it what happened what did they endorse yeah so i would describe it as a pretty long range strategy for um as you've sort of mentioned building a healthy just and sustainable food system for hrm Um, and it's the region's first food strategy so it proposes 56 title actions, and these are really measurable steps that are designed to support community food security and strengthen our regional food system. So this is part A of the plan, and part B will be coming in fall of 2023, and part B will be associated with implementation strategies for the year one recommendations, which will be tied to budgets. So when we bring this plan to council in fall of 2023, we'll be making a pretty substantial budget ask, which, you know, that'll go towards funding the plan. We hear a lot about food insecurity. Other people will say, well, that's really just hunger. Uh, Or they'll talk about food deserts, which may be about communities that have no direct access to fresh food. Uh, So so how would you describe what this the problem that this initiative is trying to solve? Yeah, so. HRM has a rate of household food insecurity that is higher than both the national and provincial average at 18.6%. So people are hungry. That's, you know, that's almost one in five households going hungry. And, you know, not not only are people hungry, but we have serious vulnerabilities in our food system to supply chain issues, to climate emergencies, to just generally disruptions that make it really difficult for people to access food. Um, and then you were you know, touching on food deserts. We have um, issues within our transportation system that make it hard for people to access food. Food policy is really something that touches you know, almost, almost every domain in, in government and municipal government too, especially. In real terms, what what do you expect people will see? What what would be the what would be the the markers to know that this is making an impact, other than reducing that overall hunger rate? Yeah, I would say that impacts we're expecting to see are reducing the vulnerabilities to supply chain issues. So what that means is we are supporting producers to get their food to market we are supporting small scale retailers to be you know thriving in a market that is really dominated by a handful of corporate players and we're supporting the consumption of local food and you know hopefully we'll see that people are having just better geographical access to food lower systemic barriers those kind of things yeah, and I'm sure you can look at specific communities where this is more of a challenge, that the, it's not equal, that access isn't equal. Does this plan address that directly? Yeah, it absolutely does. So we're really aware of the fact that systemic barriers like racism, um, 
you know, lack of affordable housing, childcare, disability, those are all huge impactors of food insecurity. And this plan does have a very equity focused lens. So we have two sections, especially under our social and economic equity pillar, um, an African Nova Scotian food justice and sovereignty section and an indigenous food so sovereignty and justice section. And these recommendations in the sections are designed by community members. So, you know, we're hoping that all of this is a very participatory process and, and with a really big equity frame. Just looking at uh, what you can find online about this, uh, it's, you know, pretty in-depth amount of work here. Uh, and clearly the Ecology Action Centre has been involved uh, right since that beginning. And, uh, and you've been involved with this. Tell me a little bit about what it is that you've helped to contribute to this overall plan. Yeah, so when I joined the Ecology Action Centre, we had just moved from the sort of food charter stage. So HRM has endorsed a just food charter. And then we moved right when I joined into the sort of really deep community engagement that helped shape these recommendations. So that was, you know, a year and a half of consulting with community, hosting targeted engagements, um, really requesting that um, active participation in the development of the plan. I, I look at, you know, the website talking about urban chickens, urban farming, gardening, public gardens, gardens in communities, you know, and access to those. Um, and, and I think in some ways we're, we're almost going back to the way things once were. I mean, the common was a place where you could graze your sheep or your cattle. That's kind of how it was set up initially when the city was starting to be formed as a as HR or as Halifax. All of this to say, you um, you know, where are we looking at for the benchmarks and how will we measure that? I know you wanted to talk about strengthening the regional food system and, and how this fits in with that, you know, hearkening back to or, or perhaps looking forward to uh, making a difference and making food, good food, local food, healthy food, accessible and available. Yeah. So in terms of progress monitoring and benchmarks, we did just sign on as the municipality and the mayor just signed on to the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact. And that is a really key part of the way that we intend to monitor the progress of this plan. So that's an international agreement um, of cities committed to you know, developing sustainable and equitable food, equitable food systems. And it offers um, you know, a really wide variety of key performance indicators and monitoring strategies. And then just on, on top of those, we are looking back to some work that was done, you know, in around 2013, I want to say, for food counts. So that was a, an assessment of the Halifax regional food system. And we'll be using a lot of those baseline monitoring tools to, to look ahead. Okay. The Ecology Action Center says this is good news. The mayor says this is good news. Council says this is good news. And most people would probably be going about their lives thinking uh, it's expensive to buy groceries. How is this good news? How, how would you how would you tell people? How would you sell this as being good news? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a really huge investment from government in our food system and, you know, a really public display that is treating food as a human right and as something that is you know vital to to invest community um you know money infrastructure into you know we are prioritizing food we're not letting this sit on the sidelines um you know in the way that we've seen we've seen governments do for you know in, in decades past and uh, to be uh, blunt, this took uh, the work of two different councils, so it's taken some time for it to, to get to this point, and it may even be the next, past the next municipal election before it's finalized through Plan B. As, as you say, that's all being worked on. Uh, it, more, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap this up? I think just in terms of what you were saying around, you know, the commons and how we did at some point have a more localized sovereign food system, that is something that we're really cognizant of and you know we want to be treating food as a public good rather than a commodity and this this plan aims to you know both both demonstrate that and and make it a reality so i think that's that's it for me 
a community food coordinator with the Ecology Action Center here in Halifax, Moore Vale. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. Yeah, thank you too.